Hello viewers and welcome to Tech It. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a frame digger. A frame digger is a lot like a frame based quarry, if you know quarries from Buildcraft, only it's been turned on its side so that you can dig out a layer. Um, I'm in my house right now in what originally was a jungle biome, but I'm not a big fan of jungle biome, so I just hit it with some TNT, you know, made it pretty. Over here we have some basic infrastructure that you're going to need if you're going to be using a frame digger. Since it's going to be built with red power, you're going to need a battery system to keep uh, batteries and power supplied to your digger. Right here I just have a filter, which is tasked with taking empty batteries out, and a retriever tasked with pulling um, full batteries from this box. The way it works is, any time that an empty battery gets dumped in here, it gets, dump it gets dropped into the top of the battery box, recharged, and then once it's full, the retriever will pulse and pull it out and put it in the chest. Over here we have an optional piece of equipment. This is a uh, level 2 collector on top of a condenser making torches and then depositing them into this ender chest here. As you can see, this ender chest and this ender chest are on two different channels. I also have a third ender chest over here, which is our sorting chest. It has two filters attached with a timer on it going into the sorting machine. This is a really basic sorting machine. There's no processing done of the ore. Um, all the stuff that I have in here is from when I was digging this hole over here, which um, I discovered this hole after I blew everything up with TNT and decided to expand on it a little bit. Um, basically, that's all you need um, topside to get this guy going. Now we're going to get jump down here. If we're going to be building a frame digger, we might as well do it down at the diamond level. So here I am at bedrock. Um, this is 42 block breakers that I built. I definitely recommend using project tables for this, uh, along with a whole bunch of frames. I have project tables here to give me more frames, as well as tubing and redstone tubing. I'm going to take some of that stuff right now. Uh, I'm not going to need any of that just yet. There we go. And maybe grab a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to get some more wood if I want to make any more frames after this. Okay, so the basic idea is we have seven, uh, what is it, six rows of seven? block breakers. There's 42 in total, I know that. Yeah, 6 rows of 7 sounds right. And we have frames in between. Make sure that block breakers are on the sides and they are all facing forward. Um, now we're going to lay out another layer of frame behind, and we're also going to have one that sticks out more than all the others. We'll see why in a minute. Actually, that can be a little higher, can it? Yeah, it can go right up here. That'll do, that'll do. Hmm. No, 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 right here. Better, better. I've actually not done one this small before, but I wanted to make it a little more accessible to newer players. So, just keep in mind that this is almost infinitely expandable. The only limit is making sure that you have less than a hundred, uh, thousand blocks in total. Unless you tweak your config settings in Red Power, which I may have done, but that's beside the point. Here we go. So we're going, and actually we're going to need these frames to stick out just a little bit more than the rest. If you're unfamiliar with frames, then I definitely don't recommend tackling this. This is a mildly advanced build. It's going to require a little bit of planning and forethought, but you know, I've already done that for you. All you got to do is watch. Now you're going to have to have red power tubing, uh, red wire tubing coming out of every one of these block breakers because you're going to want to collect all the wonderful things that they break. Okay, I'm going to cut until I have this done. Okay, now that we're done with that, we have all these guys wired up. The next step is going to be to reach in here, pull out our diamond handsaw, and I'd say half a stack of cobblestone will do it. We're going to make a whole bunch of covers. Might be going a little overboard, but they'll be useful. There we are. We have four stacks of covers now. Any part that's going to be touching the outside wall needs to be covered, so these two on the edge need to. We're also going to need to get every one of these frames on top covered. Every frame on the bottom side here. And every frame on the front. These are all going to need covers so they don't accidentally try to grab the stuff in front. I'm going to cut until I have all these on, so see you then. Okay, now that we have all those covers in place, it's time to start worrying about how we're going to make this thing actually dig. Now, the easiest way that I've always found for doing something like this is to use a little bit 
of uh, wireless redstone. Now I have three and three of the transmitters and receivers. I do have a spare one which is going to be for the torch placing system which is optional. So I have kept that aside. We're going to place one of the receivers down here now. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Yeah, well, right over here ought to be good. And up, oh, up, oh, right. Anytime you're placing down any sort of redstone or stuff like that, you're going to need a panel. So I'm going to make three panels. You can just put a couple of your covers back together to make a panel like that. And we're also going to need, we'll put that guy down, grab a single piece of red alloy wire, and two pieces of red jacketed wire. I'm going to put the red jacket wire here and here so that it connects to the red piping. And then we're going to need our screwdriver, which I left in the chest over here. We turn that so it's facing the right way, and now we're going to have to assign it a channel. How about uh, 42,000, and we will call this test Q digger. And up oh, is that already taken? Test Q digger set name. Now, okay. So now that is on that channel, and we have our handy wireless remote right here. We can just take it, set it to test Q digger. Anytime we pulse, every one of these block breakers on the front is going to dig. You could, of course, do this with regular wiring instead of using these wireless redstones, but I find it saves us a lot of space, and we're going to need that space later. Hmm. As for the next part, we're going to need one more frame sticking out here. And how are we going to do this? Actually, no, 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 no. Let's put this one up. It'll all make sense in a moment, guys, I promise. And here. And we're going to want to put covers on these two fellows. More covers, right? And we're going to want to put a cover on... No, no, we're not going to want to put a cover on that one. That is good. That is all set the way it is. If you wanted to be neat and tidy, you could cover all this up because none of those are going to need to connect to anything ever again. But yeah, that's the digging head right there. I'm going to build out a little platform, and then once I've built that, I'm going to cut back in. Okay, and we're back again. As you can see, I've built a little platform here. You may want to wonder why this part here is off-center. That is because this quarry is going to shift right and then left, and the way that these arms are, one will always be touching here. Notice how there's a cover on this piece, but not a cover on this piece. That means that this piece will always grab the front of the head when it's moving forward, and so one of these will always be touching to push the frame head forward with the rest of the machine. But when we shift this guy left and right, it will not try to move the platform that it's attached to. Next, we're going to need two of our, um, our motors, and we're going to get those guys set up. So we're going to put them like this and this, and then we're going to have to pull out our screwdriver and get them facing the right way. We're going to want to see the blank side facing this way. And that means that both of these arrows are facing it. We want to have them face inward to each other, like that. The way that'll work is that whenever it pushes one to the side, the other one will always be able to push it back. Next, we're going to need to put down another one of our receivers. Hmm, right here looks to be a good spot, so let's just make another panel. Oh, look, we already got one. I think we're going to need another. Hmm... Yeah, another panel will do us well. Oh, I'm hearing a skeleton. Ah, well. We drop this guy here, face him the right way, get us a little bit more alloy wire to work with. Now ah, we'll grab all of it just in case. Now we pull this guy here. Oh, hey, Hellfire's on. So now, it, there's no power to these engines, but let's just test it out and make sure that we're, uh, oh no, we've got to set a channel for this. Okay, so we had the last one there, we'll go up one, and this will be test Q move arm. Set the name for that guy, then we go into our remote, test Q move arm. There we go, and we get a redstone signal going to both these guys. Now here's a problem. 
these two red wires are not touching any frames. How are we going to fix that? Ooh, that's an easy fix, actually. Surprised I didn't think of this before. Oh, no, broke a frame. Easy fix, though, easy fix. And we're going to put some covers. As you notice, I went a little nuts on the covers. I really, really don't want this thing accidentally grabbing anything that it runs over. It's an incredibly unlikely event, but it'll save me with troubleshooting later if I do that. Um, and this is never going to have to touch anything, and that sh shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. This is doable. This is doable. We're going to break that. We're going to get one more panel. And we got the two panels. One here, and one here. That should work. Mm. I've done this before, but I'm really... It's... Every one of these is its own little test. I'm sure that I'll end up having to troubleshoot this, but whatever I get working... There we go. Now those two guys are doing that. The problem is that I'm also going to have to get a power supply to this guy soon, and I want to have some space for that. Hmm. You know, no, no, no. Put this frame back here. We're going to need to put a frame here. And we're going to dig out... Hmm. Oh, this is going to make it really complicated if I don't do this right. Hey, I got an idea. I'm going to cut back when I um, got this figured out. Okay, we're back. Uh, had a little server burp there, but I think I'm back to where I was. I tweaked the design a little bit again. I have the one set up for moving the arm down here again. I have the... I actually lost a little bit of progress, but I replaced the motors. Um, now I have the blue wire going into the back here with these frames keeping uh, these attached to it. And the battery box is here. I've cleared out this side because I'm going to need some work on that. I'm also going to need to put, I think, one, two, three, yeah. I'm going to need those frames there. Now, I want to test the motors, but I'm going to have to get some power in. So I might as well set up the power system at the same time. So we're going to get the filter in the retriever. And we're going to pick up this battery chest, which is one full of batteries. There we are. Dug a little too well. Um, so this should probably go right here. There. Okay, then we have some regular pneumatic tubing here. I'm going to want a little bit of redstone tubing because I'm going to want to tick these machines off. Okay, the retriever's going to have to pull that way. That's not right. I'll fix that in a second. And that's the filter going that way. And we're going to need one more tube underneath. And it looks like we're going to need a cover just to keep this redstone signal from touching the battery. I don't know if that's important or not. I'd rather not risk it. Now let's get this retriever pointed our inside to the... There we go. And we're going to need to get a redstone signal to that guy. So one more piece of frame right here. A couple more panels right here and here. And we'll put our wireless remote there. And some alloy wire and a redstone wire. And now we just gotta turn this guy. There we go. Now we'll right click on him. We need to make a new command. This will be test quarry battery and that'll cycle the batteries. Now first things first we're going to need to get an empty battery. So let's take one of these full ones out. We'll dump it in. Come on. There you go. Getting a little bit of lag on the server. Oh, I shouldn't be doing that because we just got it fresh. Um, the retriever is going to be the one pulling out the full ones. The retriever does not have juice. Ooh, that makes it harder. It does, it does, it does, it does. No, no, this is this is fixable. Oh, I am so smart. 
Let go. Let's go. I'll be back when this is working. Okay, looks like this is just going to be part one today. The server is being very finicky, and I don't feel like trying to work on it if it's not going to behave properly. I'll get the next part up ASAP as soon as I can get 30 minutes to record the end of this. We are almost done, though, and then it's just going to be setting up the computer or the redstone circuitry and testing this guy out. I do hope you guys have learned a little bit. I am sorry for this sudden delay. Good luck to all of you and all your adventures.